Hi, this is Doug and Brad with the Dark Sliders podcast, episode nine. You gonna say hi, Brad? I am gonna say hi. Hi, everybody. <laughs> uh, so there's actually a lot of cool news this week. Uh, a lot of exciting news, big game releases. Brad actually picked up one of those big game releases, Mortal Kombat X. I like that. I like that's called Mortal Kombat X. They never. I don't think they've ever said Mortal Kombat. I've 10. never they seen called, it with a ton after it. Yeah, no, they they call it X, and I think I think that's pretty cool. Um, so Brad, you actually, you picked up, we always talk about that we never pre-order games and we never spend $60 on games anymore. Uh, but this is another game you actually spent, you know, 60 bucks on and you got, I think day one, right? I did. I did not spend $60 on it. Somebody who got me a Best Buy gift card randomly spent $60 on it. So. <laughs> okay. That makes, I guess that makes more sense. <laughs> All right. That does make more sense. My birthday was a while ago and I found a Best Buy gift card laying around and I think it had like 50 bucks. So I was like, well, Mortal Kombat came out. I should probably take care of that <laughs> yeah so what are your what are your uh what are your initial impressions of mortal Kombat? this series i i have like i think we talked last episode i don't have a lot of history with but i know you've been following the series since you were like 10 yeah. so yeah go i really like this this is a great game um so i've had it since tuesday so far i've played through the whole campaign mode three or four towers um Jeez. And a little bit of other stuff. I went through and, you know, of course, gave, like, every character, like, two or three fights just to see how I felt with every character. Um, That's a lot of playtime. <laughs> it's a decent amount. Yeah, I didn't I, I didn't really play anything else. I basically did just Mortal Kombat. So. Oh, okay. <laughs> That's about all I played this week. But, uh, so a couple of things. The first thing with this is it is a super, super smooth game. Just the fighting and everything in it is so fluid. Everything just, I mean transitions between moves even if they're not part of a direct combo it's all timed out really well you never mm-hmm. get that kind of and i've noticed i mean it's more in 2d fighters from old as opposed to kind of some of the more updated ones but where there's like okay i tried to punch but i wasn't quite done with the other thing it just everything feels really good when you're playing it oh it's like it's really snappy yeah really really snappy uh, that's cool which works really 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 well just everything about the game i mean the combos are all more or less the same. There's enough new characters to mix it up, and all the special moves, of course, are there. Character-wise, there's a ton of new characters in this. Uh, most of them are like so and so's kid and so and so's kid. Like now you've how, got how'd you yeah, how'd you like that? Like I, I know that you're like a longtime fan, so I don't know if there's like characters that are missing because of that. Like how do you like how do you like that? There's just a shite ton of new characters. There's a few missing characters, but. Again, I like the fact that Mortal Kombat's going to much more of a story-based fighting game, which I really mm-hmm. personally like. So it's kind of cool. So the way the story works is the initial scene is set like in the same time as the last Mortal Kombat, Mortal Kombat 9. And okay. then basically after the first chapter of the story, which I believe was 10 or 12 chapters, mm-hmm. um, after the first chapter, it's a 20 years later... And you see old oh, freaking cool. Johnny Cage there, and Johnny Cage is now leading a team of Cassie Cage, who is his daughter, Jackie Briggs, who is uh, Jack's daughter, yeah. Kenshi's son, and uh, I've got the other one. He's related to Luke Kang and Kung Lao some, or in uh, Kung Lao somehow. I don't remember exactly how though. I think it's like his nephew or something. But yeah, so cool. it's yeah. a really interesting way to kind of tie everything in there. Yeah, I'm surprised. I'm surprised I actually went back. I didn't realize that they did like a direct sequel. To, I knew it was a direct sequel to MK9, but I didn't realize like the beginning was a prequel. I guess, and then they do a huge time jump. Yeah, is, is the time jump like? Is it kind of cool? Like, there's like a really big scene, and all of a sudden it says twenty years later or something like that. Uh, kind of. So the basic story is is the big bad in this has this amulet and he's a fallen elder god so the elder gods are of course the protectors of the different realms and each one looks over a different one um Mm -hmm. so he has an amulet and johnny cage and raiden and all of them kind of you know take this amulet from him and hide it and he goes and dies and then 20 years later everything's all cool there's like a treaty with outworld all this other stuff and then this amulet gets found again and everybody's trying to get it to make sure that kind of piece stays there so oh that's kind of cool the prequel type part ends with that amulet being taken and then it flashes to 20 years later here's johnny cage's team that's trying to maintain peace without world and then they find out that oh crap this amulet's back oh that's kind of cool that's i like that's like a real story <laughs> yeah it actually it is a very very real story from a fighting game which <laughs> i i really like that nether realm has switched to that because i mean even if you look at injustice injustice had a kind of 
nonsensey story, but it still had like a very strict story mode of why these characters are fighting each other, why this is all happening. Of course, Mortal Kombat Nine had that too, which I really like. Mm-hmm. Oh, can you put? I, this was a, I, I never knew this because I didn't play MK Nine. Can you pull off fatalities in story mode or not? No. You okay. Cannot. Um, just because I think that I think just to kind of make it so that it's fluid, because a lot of the characters like come back. So like, if the second chapter you're playing as, um, I don't know, Sonya Blade, and you beat Sub Zero, it yeah. wouldn't make sense if oh, I you know burned his face off <laughs> yeah. here, and here he is, you know, an hour and a half later fighting somebody okay. else. So there's no fatalities in there, which mm. I think works. And I mean, I'm not playing Mortal Kombat for the fatalities. I know some people get super crazy about those, but <laughs> it's just kind of an extra piece to it. Yeah. A um, couple other things, the CG in the story. So, like, the story is a lot of CG. I mean, it's, it's like, Metal Gear solid, like, gameplay to movie ratio. It's, like, oh, at times, good. like, five-minute scene, fight, two-minute scene, fight. Two minute scene, fight. <laughs> Five minute scene, fight. So it is pretty segmented, but if you get into the story, it works really, really well just because the story is really well done. But I think if this keeps going the way it is for NetherRealm, where these games are working, I can really quickly see other studios trying to copy that. And if you don't have that well put together story, it is not going to be pretty because there is a lot of just stuff between actual gameplay. How's how's the uh, how's the story compared? To, I heard that MKX was a bit shorter than MK9. Was that a good thing? Did they trim off the fat, or did you not notice that it was shorter? I didn't really notice. And again, I I would play the story for an hour or two, do a couple single fights, or run through a tower really quick, whatever it might be. But mm-hmm. I didn't really have any issue with length or anything like that. I mean, I would much rather have a cohesive story than be able to say this game took me twenty hours to beat. I'd rather have the everything was fluid and made sense. Okay, that's cool. Which it did. But yeah, a lot of just kind of cool little things with this. So like, those CG parts to the gameplay, they always transition really well, where like the story and the CG automatically somewhere or another, and somewhere or another the camera always ends with your character on the left and the other one on the right, and then it just pans back to an arena. Oh, that's kind of cool. And the way the, C- the CG looks like it's done in engine, so you mm. don't even notice like a graphical switch at all. It's just like you're zoomed in on Scorpion's face, and then the camera kind of pans around and you see, I don't know, Sub Zero standing across from Scorpion, and then it pans back to get into the, like the fight. So there's never oh, that like transition cool. piece, which is really, really cool and really, <laughs> really well done. Do you play the good guys and the bad guys, or is it just sort of? Yeah, good it's guys? both. It's oh, both, okay. but it's it's. I mean, it's a pretty in depth story. So there's some double crossing <laughs> going on in there, and you don't really know. But yeah, you play pretty much as a member of every faction. Like you play as Kotal Khan at one point, who's kind of the ruler of Outworld at the time this takes place. He's one of the new characters, but you also play as Sonya Blade. You play... I think it runs through 12 of, like, the 20-ish characters in the game, so you get to play as the majority of them, which is pretty oh, cool. Oh, okay. That's pretty and I, it really works, I think, if you've never played these, to serve as a quick introduction to some of the major characters. If you've never played a fighting game before, you know, a lot of times you just, ah, that guy's got the coolest design pick. That's my guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Whereas this, it's... Okay, here's four fights as Johnny Cage. Here's four fights as Sonya. Here's four fights as Raiden. So you got a handle on all the characters. Oh, that's kind of cool. Oh, I see what you're saying. That's kind of cool. Yeah, but overall, I I really really like this game. I'll be putting a lot more time into it. Um, yeah, Just overall, it's a great game. Um, really really pretty game, and I know like a lot of stuffs made of the fatalities. I don't really get too much into that, but the fatal fatalities. I said that weird. Uh, are pretty easy to pull off for the most part, and again. Compared to some other older Mortal Kombat games, I think they're a lot easier to do. Yeah. Which, you know, good, bad, whatever, it doesn't really matter to me. But there are some pretty gruesome ones in there that are... Yeah, they looked gross from, like, the videos I saw. Borderline nasty, yeah. There's a couple times where it's like, oh, I can do a fatality here. Uh, I think my wife's in there. I should probably skip that. She might have liked that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, did she, like, yeah, did she see you playing, like, pulling off, like, x-ray moves and stuff and go, like, what the hell are you playing? Uh, I don't think so. She never mentioned anything. I had it on a couple times while she was in the room, but it was always during the story, so there were no fatalities or anything. So it wasn't anything, oh, okay. like, like, super over the top, like, because, <laughs> yeah. man, there's some nasty ones in there, and, I mean, it got to, there was a couple of them where it's, like, that almost bothers me, and I normally don't get that with stuff, like... <laughs> At this point, I mean, I think we said before, I started playing Mortal Kombat when I was, like, 7 or 8. So it's like, yeah. I'm used to this stuff. But there were a couple in there, like, where it is, like, as I was watching, I was like, ugh, that's 
that doesn't need to happen in this. That could, <laughs> this would probably be a better game if that was not in here. I don't want to fight against that character anymore. <laughs> oh god. Oh yeah. Like effort. Like Casey. I saw a video of like Casey Cage's X-ray move. Yep. Oh, I don't even talk about it. That made me. Mm-hmm. I was like, that made me feel yep. things. <laughs> For those of you who haven't seen it, she's the daughter of Johnny Cage. Who one of his moves in at least the past few. I don't remember how far back it goes. Is the nut punch, and that is her X-ray move. <laughs> and it zooms right in there and gives you a nice graphic detail of what's happening happening when you would punch someone in the nuts. Which, <laughs> yeah, you really don't need to see that. But <laughs> oh, that was horrible! I can I just can't believe I got approved at a meeting. I get it. <laughs> you know, some like I don't know, somebody gave that idea, and like they had to present that idea, and, and then oh, like yeah. ten people had to agree, and then like a bunch of animators had to agree, and and, and pff, good luck. You get really in depth in there and make sure everything <laughs> yeah. was formed nicely. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, um, but yeah, the only thing, and this is something that doesn't bother me, but I know it's it's kind of been like one of the more news items with this game this week, is the DLC with this. Yeah. And a lot of people are not happy. This is something that doesn't bother me because I ignore it. And we talked about before when we talked about this, how I probably won't get to play as Predator or Jason or any of the other characters. <laughs> I'm just not going to bother downloading it. But there are a lot of people who are a lot really upset about the DLC because it's kind of a weird setup that they have with it. Yeah. Do you, Do you know all the details with that one or no? More or less, I just know that, like, so the unlockable thing in this is the crypt, which is where you go in this weird first-person thing, and you're walking through this graveyard, and yeah. as you play, you get coins, you unlock it, and there's, like, I think it's, like, 10 bucks or something you can unlock. It's 20. All, is it 20? It's 20, 20 bucks, bucks to unlock everything, and it's not something you should pay 20 bucks for, because it's like, oh. oh, you unlocked a different brutality. Oh, you unlocked a concept art. You unlocked a song to listen to in the background for the yeah. most part. I thought I for that stuff I I can kind of I don't yeah I don't feel like that the twenty dollar thing I really don't feel bad about because like nobody in their right mind is going to spend that money and I think the people who would spend that money are actually I do have a quick story with Mortal Kombat I walked into a GameStop like right after work and I was in a polo shirt and then another guy comes in who obviously just got out of his like office meeting and he is like in a suit and he must have been like in his late thirties and he comes in he's like bought a copy of Mortal Kombat. And I feel like he doesn't have enough time to unlock the crypt, so he might actually spend 20 bucks, And he has the money to do it. So, I mean, yeah, and then the, the other microtransaction thing that people don't like is the uh, easy fatality coins. Have you heard about those or no? I've unlocked a couple, because you can get them in the crypt just as you're playing as normal. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, it, I mean, you don't get, like, a, they're limited, so I think I've got maybe three of them the entire <laughs> game time I've played. Yeah. But, so the easy fatality thing is basically you unlock a coin or... Whatever it is, and instead of having to go through, I mean, the fatalities in this are pretty much easy enough that it's not an issue. I mean, they used to be where it was like left, right, left, right, up, down, up, down, X, B, X, B. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I didn't like this. Those. It's this. It's more or less like forward, back, forward, back, up, down, triangle, or something like that. Where it's just like maybe four or five movements and a button. Oh, okay. Which are, I mean, there. I have yet to find one that I haven't been able to do. Whereas, I mean. Mortal Kombat 3 and stuff, I mean, you had to get, like, you had to go print out the list of button presses, sit it next to you, and sit there and, like, stare at it and get really angry as you tried to do these and couldn't. But, oh yeah, yeah so, the e- <laughs> Sorry. so the easy fatality thing is basically, instead of being able to do it normally, you just hold R2 and push, like, square or triangle, and it will do it for you. But So you don't, I mean, that doesn't really affect gameplay or anything. Has no effect on gameplay. I think it's just because Mortal Kombat gets so much press for... Um, fatalities and everything. I think it's just their way of saying, okay, we can show everybody this thing that's kind of unique to our game without making you learn these crazy, ridiculous, over-the-top button combinations. Yeah, I, I think I don't think it's that. I don't think it's nearly as nefarious as other DLC. Like it's not. It's not like a free-to-play thing in the least. No, not at all. So I don't think it's that bad. I I can see why people would kind of get rubbed the wrong way. If I if I hate I hate playing a game and then I there's like a lock button and I click on something, it's like pay whatever dollars. I just that just irks me, but it's not enough for me to like boycott the game or something ridiculous. The, the one thing I will say is this has what I don't like is the menu screen looks really nice, and it's got like your five options like one player, two player, online, so and so down the list. But at the top, it's got one is faction war, which we didn't really talk about. I haven't done much with that. The other the other corner is um, living towers, which is like their op- updated daily online piece. Yeah. And then right smack dab in the middle is press triangle for playstation store uh, and goro is one of the first downloadable characters uh, and it's just a big old picture of goro and it says playstation store press triangle so oh, gross I don't like that's that. the only part that's the only part where i really felt like it was like okay you're trying to get this to be you're trying to sell me something i didn't really find that at any other point because i 
pre-ordered it, meaning I went, eh, I'll stop at Best Buy Monday night and <laughs> <laughs> or Tuesday afternoon, so I'll just put this order in on BestBuy.com Monday night. I got the pre-order bonus, so I know, I think, if you don't get Goro for free, I think in the character select, he's still there, and it just says, Ugh. press X to purchase on PlayStation. Oh, that's, sh- okay, that is shitty. That which is, is shitty, cool. but I'm going to deal with that, because I got it already, so. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. All right, uh... <laughs> Moving on, I guess, a little bit. Uh, so, besides playing Bloodborne, shit ton again. I might talk about <laughs> that later. I played Wolfenstein. I got Wolfenstein. Wolfenstein was $11 at Target, which is enough for me to get Wolfenstein. Uh, I've been pretty, I like being cheap with games, and if a game goes in the bargain bin, especially one as good as Wolfenstein, I'm picking it up. Uh, and picking me up a copy. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I actually got Brad a copy, too, because I'm a nice guy, and there are a ton of copies sitting in Wisconsin. So, <laughs> um, anyway, so I, so Wolfenstein, this is one of those games that like subverts your expectations for what a Wolfenstein game means. So what I thought this game would be, <laughs> would be like, let's bro down and shoot Nazis. And then fight Mecha Hitler. And yeah, and fight Mecha Hitler and stuff like that. And that is not, that's, I mean, that's part of it. They have some really good like bro down moments. Um. But the story in this is way, way, way better than it should be, and far more intense than any Wolfenstein game should ever be. Uh, have, you, have you played any of the other ones? Just out of curiosity. Uh, I mean, I played Wolf. I played Wolfenstein 3D. <laughs> that was Just like like everybody else. Okay. Yeah. But you haven't played like. I know there was Return to Castle Wolfenstein, no. and then there was I think that other reboot that happened a couple years ago. Yeah, there's a few. That this apparently this one is actually a direct sequel to those as well. Like they don't ignore oh. those. Um, I don't know how they don't ignore those, but I've been told that they don't. <laughs> <laughs> You're not lost in the story. Oh no, no! Like they, they kind of inter- like there's one character he's met that he's known before, but they kind of they give you like an introduction to who she is and things like that. I don't. I'm gonna. I'm gonna not talk about the, the this. Oh yeah, this game has decisions, which I was not expecting at all. Um, so like you know, like Mass Effect, you have like the good yeah. option and the bad option. Wolfenstein gives you two bad options. And you, That's it? Like, no good options? There's no good op- Well, it's not, it's not your bad guy options. You just have, like, two things that you have to pick from, and you don't want to pick either of them, but you have to. Like, okay. Um, I don't want to spoil the first one, because the first one's actually the coolest, so I'll kind of spoil the second option. <laughs> you are, you're on a Nazi train, nobody knows you're there, and you're getting coffee, and a, some, I don't know, high-up general woman um, is drinking coffee there, and she asks you to sit down. And what she does, she's like, okay, I'm going to play a little game with you. And if you fail, I'm going to shoot you. Um, she doesn't know She doesn't know who he is. So she's just being crazy. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so it's like her and her cohort are sitting there. And she's like, I'm going to decide if you're of like a pure Aryan race. And so what she does, she sets down a gun next to you. And then two cards. And she keeps flipping cards asking you, okay, what do you find attractive? What do you find ugly? What, you're taking a psychology test, and the entire time you can pick between the two cards or the gun, and the whole time she's like messing with you. She's like, if you, it's like, remember, if you choose the gun, I will blow your head off. Like it's like, <laughs> and because there's a huge mecha thing behind her too, and a bunch of guards and stuff like that, and you're sitting there like picking these cards, and she's playing with you the entire time, and you're like, you, you have no idea if the scene's just gonna turn sour like any second. And I don't want to spoil how cool. it ends, um, but it was, it's incredible, and it's like <sighs> way, way, it's, it was such a good cool cinematic character moment the writing in this is great so the whole scene is really really intense and uh the first i would say that i will say though the first time the game gives you an option which i was shocked they even gave me an option sucks it's (laughs) it's awful it's so bad it's not i mean it's good it's it's good gameplay wise and like story wise but you feel like shit (laughs) that game makes you feel like crap um which is what i want when i play a fun entertaining piece of entertainment (laughs) yeah yeah uh okay there is good. There is good Nazi shooting. I don't even want to talk about that first. Okay, just okay. Just know that the Nazi shooting in this is great. Uh, it runs at sixty frames per second. You get cool weapons. You can dual wield literally everything, which is really cool. That's pretty cool. <laughs> like literally every weapon you get, you can dual wield. Um, they're like there's kind of a trade off because they're not nearly as accurate, and you kind of like go all over the place when you try to shoot yeah. with them. But they set off. They, there's parts they set up really narrow hallways in order for you to use those guns. It's so like running down a hallway with like dual, dual shotguns, just like blowing people <laughs> away, like ten guys in a row away. So much fun. 
That's really weird because that sounds like really arcadey and it's like really not serious to have that paired with like the decision making thing. Yeah, no, it's it's that seems like a really odd combination. No, but... yeah, it's really cool though because it's like it's just something that you wouldn't normally expect. Like this game, comparatively, like gameplay wise, the only other game I could compare it to, which is one of my favorite games ever, is Painkiller. But yeah, it's like Painkiller. If Painkiller actually had like a not crappy story, uh, actually, yeah, it's, and like I don't, I mean, I'm not gonna talk too much more about it. But the all the characters are really well written. The dialogue's really fun. Um, a lot of like winks and nods sometimes, like when they're when there's like kind of a cool down moment. So they have like some fun little nods at other games and things like that. Uh, but when it gets serious, it gets serious, and there's like some really tough decisions to make. Uh, the the setting is super cool. So the game, the first, the opening is the opening is set in Wolfenstein. Like this, the the opening level is classic Wolfenstein. Like you're going to a German castle during World War II, and you're like going to take down the general. And spoiler, things go sour. So your first hour is spent at Castle Wolfenstein, and then then you go into then there's a time jump. I won't describe anything else. And then you're in 1960s, which is a really cool setting for these alternate history ones because most alternate history games I can think of are set in the future of that. Like our day, what if Nazis won? Uh, yeah. But this is set in, in 1960s if Nazis won. So you'll you'll be listening to like 1960s music that's in German. And you'll pick up clippings about uh, a band that's obviously the Beatles, but they had it. <laughs> but then they talk about how is they were an English band, but during the because they were under German rule, they had to learn to sing in German. And they were just releasing their album, something like Das Boot, the the Blue Das Boot, which is you know Yellow Submarine. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. And uh, like there's there's times you can like listen to music, and all the music is 1960s sounds but with German. And apparently what they did, they actually hired a lot of bands to, they, they hired like five different bands to make nine, fake 1960s German music. That's really cool. Yeah, no, it's really, it's really slick. And, and it's kind of cool because the, what if Nazi Germany won, it's not all bad, I guess. I, I mean, there's obviously like some of this like 1984 dictatorian rule, but the thing is like technology was so, got really far advanced because they didn't care about ethics or anything like that. So you're yeah. fighting with like laser weapons and like, Nazi mechanical dogs and stuff. Yeah, this game's amazing. It's not amazing. It's pretty good. I I am enjoying I, myself with it. It's a fun game. That's 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 what I would give my. You're really making me want to go play this. So that might be what I do when we're done with. This. Yeah, no, you should. <laughs> oh my god, you should absolutely play this. <laughs> yeah, no, it's uh, it's really cool. Although, to be clear, oh yeah, you need to download the patch before you play this game. This game has eight. I was gonna try to play it before downloading a patch. Game has a ton of problems if you don't download the really? the day one patch. Like it looks, it does not look good. Oh, and for whatever reason, the opening level does not look nearly as good as the rest of the game. I don't know what happened <laughs> during development, <laughs> but the first level looks okay, and then every level after that looks amazing. I, I don't know, I don't know what they did. Huh? That's kind of weird. Yeah. So, Brad, when you play this, the opening level is not great. After that, it's it's really good though. Like once the time skips to 1960. So yeah, I don't know. Yeah, you should go play Wolfenstein. I should. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know if I have anything else to say about that. Um, yeah. So I guess I guess moving on. Brad, I'm actually kind of excited to talk about this because you played a game series that I really like and you really haven't played before. So you've been playing, I guess, the H, I assume the HD version of God of yep. War 2. Yes, I have. How do you like God of War? What's your impressions of God of War? And have you played the first one? Um, so I played the first one on PS2. Like It was actually like relatively recent, maybe three or four years ago. Oh, I didn't know that. I don't yeah, well, I picked it up like when GameStop was doing like all their like massive. We need to get rid of all our PS2 crap, so I bought it for like three. Bucks. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So and I just randomly busted out my PS2 to play it, but then I got the HD collection a couple months ago. But anyway, I was playing. I started this actually last weekend before I got Mortal Kombat. Before I planned on getting Mortal Kombat, so this was kind of my. Eh, I'll play this for an hour in between Mortal Kombat hip game, but um, it was pretty good. I'm Doug just told me I'm like right before the final boss. So apparently I have like 20 minutes left in the game, so I'm basically done with it. I think you actually beat the final boss. I think you're actually like past the final boss. I think you've like literally beaten the game. You just have that one last gauntlet to go through, and then you've beaten Wait, the game. Wait, seriously? Yeah. Like, I think you're like literally at the end of the game. That's stupid. <laughs> Why would you beat the final boss and not be at the end of the game? Uh, I don't know. God of War games are kind of weird with their finales. I don't, I don't know. I Now now I don't want to say too much, because I'm now I'm not quite sure. But considering you killed the main antagonist, like, I can't imagine you have much more to go. <laughs> well, that's why I was curious why I kept going, because I killed, like, the main, 
so the game you're hunting down these the certain you know mythology whatever i'm not very big into mythology crap but you kill the sisters of time or fate or whatever it was and yeah and then i was just running down some stairway for a while killing like all kinds of enemies and i kept dying so i said screw this and need to go back to it yeah the god of war games i don't know why they do this but like literally every god of war game at least since two essentially is the worst with it so either right before the final boss or right after the final boss, they have this gauntlet of enemies you have to go through, and they give you like one checkpoint at the beginning of it, and it takes like ten minutes to go through. And if you die any point during that gauntlet, you have to go all the way back. And every God of War does it. I don't know why. It was such a problem in Ascension that they had to patch it. I played the patch. Are you serious? Yeah, I played the patch version, and I still thought it was broken because it was so insanely <laughs> hard. Ah, oh, God. That's see that 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 bothers me because if I beat the final boss, I shouldn't have to just go kill a horde of little tiny enemies that I've killed a billion times yeah. before just to please you for whatever reason. <laughs> okay, so be, okay. well, how do you feel about the other 99% of the game? <laughs> <laughs> the other 99% was good. I don't know, my issue with... I had this with the first one, too, is this is just not a story I'm interested in, so I'm big on stories and just... Kratos is angry, I feel like is how you could sum up the story, and Kratos is angry, and therefore he wants to kill anything and everything. I don't know. I, I think there's more of that, because I, I actually, I don't feel for Kratos, but I kind of get where he's coming from. I don't know if they do this in God of War 2. I know they do this, like, a lot in God of War 3. Is he, like, rarely ever attacks first? He's usually like, get out of my way, or give me what I want, and then somebody says no, and then he kills them, or attacks first. I didn't pay enough attention to that. There was one really cool scene, and I just got to this point this morning, actually, which is why it stuck in my head, is, I don't know if you remember this, when you fight the Kraken... Like, that fight doesn't start right away. I, I so if you it. hit the attack buttons, it's just Kratos antagonizing it. <laughs> so it's like, you hit, like, square is normally, like, your quick attack, and he just looks like, get down here, what's wrong with you? <laughs> you hit the other one, like, get out of my... And it's just, you just keep antagonizing him. And it lasted for, like, 20 or 30 seconds. I was like, am I just supposed to, like, yell this thing to death? And then eventually it, like, grabs you. Oh, the... Which I thought was just awesome. <laughs> yeah, I think, I like, um, people don't like seeing to like QTEs, but the QTEs in God of War are actually really cool because sometimes like mess with you during the QTE sequences. Like you kind of have an idea what's going on and then they'll swap out a QTE with something else or like cancel your QTE with like another attack of something else. Yeah. I love, I love but that see, stuff. This wasn't even a QTE. <laughs> it was just like walking around. Like it's just like it was the, the CG part. And then like, it's just like, you're just walking around and you can't attack the giant Kraken that's sitting in front of mm-hmm. you. And instead you get to yell stuff at it. So had it not been for the fact that my first instinct is big thing in front of me, I need to kill this. Yeah. I probably wouldn't have found it, but it's just like, one of those like little things where it's like if you try and attack this right away, it's not going to let you, and you're just going to yell. Yeah, stuff at it. I, I yeah, I like the I like the little. I don't know if that's cinematic. Uh, God of War three, they play with that stuff a lot, like a lot, a lot. Really? Yeah, there's there's a lot of stuff where they kind of mess with your QTEs. Um, I don't want to spoil. I'm so excited that you have not played God of War three because that game was <laughs> effing mind blowing, and I'm going to tell you on on video or what do we do on audio that uh. You need it. I would wait for the. If, if you have not played God of War three, you might want to wait for the remaster, because that. I will not. No, you need to wait for the remaster. I already own it, nope. so I will uh. wait and buy it again. <laughs> All right. Well, either do either way, I feel like next podcast, if you do get around to God of War three, you're gonna just want to talk about the opening, because the opening of that game is <laughs> incredible and amazing. Yeah, th- I mean, this game has some huge pieces, which I really like, like the bosses and everything. There's some big stuff. I mean, even at the beginning of this one, you're fighting some giant statue thing that just randomly comes to life for some reason. Oh, yeah, the Colossus of Rhodes or whatever. Yeah, the opening of that yeah. game is great. <laughs> so, I mean, this is I, it's a really cool game. It's one of those games where I don't necessarily know why I never played it, because, I mean, I've always been into, like, Devil May Cry and those types of things, and just for some reason I never really got into God of War. I think it was just I don't really have much interest in mythology or anything like that, mm-hmm. so it's just kind of like a, eh, whatever. Yeah, I, I think these these games are just like I think they're just really, really, really well made and just fun games. I wouldn't say they're like, oh my god, people think like God of War Two is like one of the greatest games of all time. I would not say that. But it's, oh no, I would not agree with that at all. No, but I, I think it's super fun. It's a it's a really fun, well made game. Yeah, yeah. I like that. God, I'm so excited for you to play God of War Three. <laughs> it's re- sometime in the next couple weeks yeah I, wolfenstein then god of war 3 i think yeah. is my plan. i don't i don't want to say anything about god of war 3 because there's people have some very strong opinions about that one i think it's great <laughs> um and that's all i'm gonna say until next time we talk about god of war 3 on episode 11 or 10 or 12 anyway <laughs> <laughs> uh moving on to 
I guess we're just going to kind of combine these, because these always go back and forth between games we want to play and news. Sometimes it's news, sometimes it's a game we want to play, sometimes it's both. So we're, we're just, it's all the same stuff. And if anybody's been listening for a long time, they kind of realize that by now. Uh, this is an example of a game we don't want to play. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm just going to kind of let Brad rant on this one, because I don't care nearly as much as Brad <laughs> about this announcement. So Activision announced Guitar Hero Live. Don't, don't say anything yet. <laughs> Let me finish. <laughs> guitar Hero Live is a new Guitar Hero game that has a new controller. It has six buttons instead of five, and it's three buttons stacked on top of each other. So when you play the buttons, it's more like actually like fingering on a guitar, which I think is kind of cool. Uh, but moving on to the part that people <laughs> want to talk about, and I'm sure Brad is going to get kind of vocal about, is the... Uh, so they don't have 3D characters anymore. They filmed a live crowd with some sort of 360 camera... And then you play in front of a quote-unquote live crowd. And then if you play well, the crowd cheers. If you play bad, a thousand people tell you you're terrible. Um, so, Brad, what, what are your feelings about Guitar Hero Live? I, I, think, I think it's okay. I, I don't really have... Uh, I don't like I, it. Oh, I know. <laughs> do you not like it because you're a rock band fan and you just like rock band? Or what, what do you... All right. First of all, you can get that out of the way. Yes, I'm a huge yeah, rock band person, and I would play rock band any time over Guitar Hero. I do, however, own Guitar Heroes 2 through World Tour, Aerosmith, and Metallica. So <laughs> I do both because I had, yeah, <laughs> I like my plastic instruments. But, okay, so a couple of things you said that I really have thoughts on. I hate the crowd idea. Yeah. I hate yeah. it. Like, I just, part of, like, what makes these games is kind of the cinematic piece to it of, like, when you go through... And Guitar Hero always had really, really cool, like, venues that yeah, you played in. Yeah. So you, like, progress through and you start out, like, in the basement of, like, your parents' house mm -hmm. or whatever. And then by the end, you're playing on, like, a spaceship or whatever. I know one was, like, you were in, like, some chariot-looking thing playing Dream Theater. Yeah, that was actually a World of Warcraft level. I don't know if you ever knew that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But, like, so they have these, like, really cool progressions. And now it's just like, okay, just every time you're playing in front of the same group of people who are cheering or booing you. And you're going to look at the exact same thing for all 60 songs or whatever. I can't, I can't imagine that's the case. But I was thinking, like, how many crowds could they get to do, to shoot? Like, how, how many venues did they shoot video for? Like, did they, because there's also five different bands. I don't know if you know that. There's, like, five different bands. Yeah. And then, so I don't know how many different venues. So I, I don't, I but, don't get it. But even with that, people are people. Like, <laughs> I don't think anybody's in a band going, like, the coolest part about this is when I go there, I get to see different, faces staring and yelling at me instead of you know what yeah, I mean? I, I think it's definitely I think they're trying to mimic the experience of being a rock star but it doesn't feel like that it kind of feels like there's a show called Peep Show which I don't know if you've heard of but it's a it's a no. British comedy show where they stare into the camera like you see through people's eyes the entire time um, and I feel it's kind of like that where like you don't feel like a rock star you just feel like there's a lot of people staring at you <laughs> and not even people it's, yeah it's I don't know well, and, like, for people who've never played this before, and especially having the new controller, which I'll complain about in a second. Um, new controller's fine. I feel like the first... We'll talk about it in a second. <laughs> <laughs> I, feel, I feel like, like, the issue I have is the first hour of the game is just going to be... Especially if you're new and with the new controller, it's just going to be people, like, sitting there going, boo, boo. You know what I mean? And I, like, I guess. I don't know. If you are on, e if you can't do easy, even, just like, playing the game but, for the first time. But, see, here's the thing, is, like, the fact of the matter is, like, with the old instruments, I'm at the point where I could pretty much 100% half the game on expert. Like, yeah. I'm not going to want to go back and play easy. I don't want to do that. You know oh, what I mean? Yeah, well, you have to, like, relearn. Like, that's part of my issue with the controller is I have to relearn this whole stupid worthless skill that I already have on expert. <laughs> you just decide to screw with me. Like, if I get this, I have this weird feeling where I'm going to have to sit here and I'm going to have to start on easy and play four or five songs on easy, play 10 or 15 songs on medium, and work my way back up to there. Whereas, oh no. again, I, <laughs> but, but compared to like when I got Rock Band 3, I liked Rock Band 3 because by that point, I was to the point where I can start on Expert and play my way through this game on Expert the entire way through. Well, he, I mean, I guess, but that, I mean, you're basically going to get, I feel like with, no matter how different Rock Band is going to be, it's going to be the same, it's going to be Rock Band. Like it's going to be the same experience you've already yeah. had three times. So I don't think that Guitar Hero having a new experience is like necessarily a bad thing. But I don't think it, it's it's not an, it's but see to me it's not a new experience it's the same experience just screw it. 
Like that's all it is. It's you're not offering me anything. You're new. You're just saying now instead of like sliding your hand to the left, you have to slide your hand up, and you have to completely like reorient yourself to how to do. Oh, this. So, you're, so you're saying it's like it's basically the same game. They just changed the controls slightly, so now it seems different, but like it's the same concept. Yeah, it'd be, it, to me, it's like okay, like I was playing Final Fantasy VII a while ago, and it was driving me crazy that I had to move around with the D-pad. And now I have to move around with the analog stick. You yeah. know what I mean? Like, there's subtle differences where there where it's not a gameplay changer. It's just a subtle input change that, like... And that one's not something that's really going to mess with your skill in yeah. a game, but it's enough to throw you off a bit. Gotcha. So so you don't see it as something, like, new and fun and exciting. You see it as, like, I'm learning the same skill, but just slight, with, like, a slight... With a different controller, and that's it. And so you've had, you're just... Okay. Exactly. I, I can see it. I can see that's a complaint, but I can see it's, like, for new people, I think if you're starting fresh with the series, it'd be kind of more... It'd be more interesting. But, I mean, my thing is, is unless, the, as popular as these games were, unless you are, like, under the age of 13, you have some experience with these. I mean, everyone, and maybe that's being a little... Yeah, too <laughs> literally I everyone. Mean, most people do. Like, you can go, like, if you go to, like, an arcade, like, there's, like, a arcade, I did air quotes because it's basically a go-kart place that has six games, but one of the games in the arcade part is the Guitar Hero game. Yeah, that's true, yeah. I mean, this thing was everywhere, so I just don't feel like there's enough new people that are going to be like, oh, now I can play this because the controller's different, and it's, yeah. you know, making me on par. With, uh, I, just I, think, I, think the, I think the controller concept, like, it, it does seem more like a guitar from, like, what I've seen people playing it. Like, it actually looks like you're actually like, kind of, like, fingering frets and stuff like that, and, I, and so I think I think the idea, I think, like, if they had a, a launched this thing originally with, like, the original rock band and Guitar Hero would have been, I think it would be more well, re, like, recepted, like, received, um... But yeah, I think I think people are just wary, like you said, like you're because you're a longtime fan, like you just don't want to have to relearn a new skill to basically play the same game. Well, and it's the same thing that Rock Band did. So Rock Band three introduced what they called pro instruments. Yeah, I don't know if you remember those or not, where it was like a more complicated version, and those tanked. Nobody bought them. Nobody did anything with them to the point where when they announced new Rock Band, they basically straight up said, "Yeah, we're not even going to go back to that. That was a dumb idea." Didn't you actually have a pro controller? No, I never did. I didn't. I wanted one, but they were like really expensive but did that thing like teach you how to play guitar kind of but then i could just play rocksmith <laughs> oh see oh i own rocksmith yeah oh wow okay you're like you so you're definitely a resident expert on like guitar games <laughs> oh i love guitar games yeah i love music like i yeah i guess i don't listen to music all day yeah. but speaking of being able to listen to music all day and we should probably move on to guitar here but i don't know what was wrong with the track list either they announced like 10 bands oh yeah that track was, list like, was weird oh man if you are a high school kid or the high school kid ten years ago. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that was so weird. Like the demo, I don't know what demographic they were going for because this is like not music. I don't, th I don't think this is. Maybe it is. I don't know. This, I don't think this is music that like high schoolers listen to today. I think like what you said, it's like things that high schoolers listen to like I don't know six years ago. So these kids are now college students, and maybe that's who yeah. you're going for. If you actually look at the crowd too, the crowd in the videos is pretty young, like yeah. eighteen, nineteen. Like I, I think this game isn't. Does I don't think they care about you. When they were thinking about this game, either. I think this is like mean. squarely <laughs> aimed at. Well, I mean, think about the original Guitar Hero. Like, it's not. Oh, the yeah, the it game was, wasn't yeah. made for twenty-five year olds. Like, that game was made for high schoolers. I think that's oh, what yeah. this. I think that's what they're trying to do. I, I just don't think you're in their market demographic. <laughs> that's probably true. And I mean, there are a couple. I mean, of course, there are a couple. But I mean, I mentioned it. To, I think it was you. Like, when you announce a Guitar Hero lineup, the Rolling Stones shouldn't look out of place. Yeah. And that was kind of the weird thing. It was like all these bands, 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 and they saw Rolling Stones like. Well, that one doesn't fit with what you're going for, which, <laughs> I don't know, that just felt weird to me, but, yeah, I don't know, I am not excited about this, I mean, I'll probably end up, well, no, because they got the weird controllers, so I probably won't buy it, but, yeah, I don't know, but I'm you, not excited. Yeah, well, I, I think it's interesting, but I never cared too much in the first place with these games, I think they're fun, I don't know, I think the controller's kind of cool. If you're starting out with the series, if yeah, if you haven't, I could I could see that, yes, yeah. If you haven't played the series, though, if you yeah, if you have played the series, though, I could see like like what you're saying. You're getting the game, same gameplay experience. You just got a slightly different controller, so what's the point? Uh, so I guess moving on. So this is some this is kind of a cool. Well, this is even news. This was like a sentence, like literally a sentence <laughs> that somebody posted on the a internet. A tweet. A tweet. One hundred and forty characters. Oh my gosh. Uh, so there's okay. Let me read the tweet real quick. The tweet says. Fans of Child of Light, colon, there, there are very cool projects in process set, set in the Child of Light universe. More news soon. Stay tuned. Hashtag excited. Big smiley face. Uh, so I guess there's more Child of Light coming. Although this is kind of weird. They say, 
set in the child of light universe so i don't know oh, if this is like a comic book is coming out is this a game is yeah and they this... say projects like multiple yeah like which, yeah is this a, like a sequel and something else or is it like two different games or i don't know what projects would be but i mean basically we're gonna sit here and speculate off a sentence but... <laughs> yeah I don't know. I'm excited. Child of Light is a really unique game. It has a really cool setting that I really liked, and I really liked everything about that game, so I'm just excited that there's more of it, and it's such a small thing that you never really would have thought, oh, there's going to be more of that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I think I think how he worded it, too, kind of means that there could be a lot of it. Because I think with Assassin's Creed, like, it was a multimedia conglomerate, which they had a bunch of different stuff for it. So Child yeah. of Light, like, I don't know. I could see that not necessarily having to be just a game. It could be... Uh, I don't know, like it's a book, like a storybook or something like that. Like how work, like, yeah, how cool would that be to get like a picture book that's like a Child of Light picture book or something like that, uh, where they just did the the story of Child of Light, but actually has like a kids book or something like that. I don't think it's I don't think it's gonna be that. Uh, that tweet sounded way too excited for it just to be that. Um, <laughs> yeah. So yeah, I, I don't know. So I guess Ubisoft. Although in the back of my head, I'm like, you know, Assassin's Creed Two is pretty cool, but Assassin's Creed Four, Five, and Six weren't so <laughs> weren't really that great. <laughs> <laughs> this will be good news for the next year and a half, and that's it. <laughs> yeah, as we'll be complaining in 2025. Like, oh, God, another Child of Light. Child uh, of Light 16. Jesus, why they set it in? I don't know. Oh, The damn blue thing still follows me around. Yeah. <laughs> oh, man, if they set this in different fairy tales, though, like in different cultures. That could be really cool. Ooh. Nah, that's probably... They're not. They, they're they going to it safe. They're going to play it safe. It's Ubisoft. They're not going to do that. Yeah. <laughs> uh, some more it's kind of small news. So, Super Time Force is a game that came out on, I think, PC. Did it come on Xbox? Doesn't really matter. It's a uh, kind of a fun shooter game, and the announcement was that it's well, it's coming to PlayStation. It's going to be on Vita, which I, I'll probably play this on Vita, and uh, PS4. And then this has some exclusives to PlayStation 4, blah, 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 blah. Uh, so, the exclusives, I think, are kind of cool. And I, was, I love this stuff. I really do. I know some people don't like this stuff, but I really like when... Um, a game comes out for a new console or new platform, and then they use some of the characters that are exclusive to that platform. So there's three ca three characters. One was previously announced with this Sh Shuhei Yoshida, which is kind of funny because he's the uh, I guess the I don't know what he what his official title is, but he's basically the guy who runs PlayStation, <laughs> um, and he tweets a lot. So his power is like shooting out friendly tweets, which I think is kind of cool. And actually, kind of one of the tweets is something that got him banned from Meverse. <laughs> Did you? Because uh, he got banned from Meverse for saying, um, I think his name was like iHeart PlayStation or something like that, or iHeart PS. Yeah. And then he got banned for that. <laughs> <laughs> so that's one of his tweets that he shoots out. Uh, and then the other characters that were announced were uh, the Journey guy or gal, kind of androgynous character. And uh, apparently, how they how they want to do this character is that because the character doesn't fight. In the game, they wanted to try to stick with that. So his is like car is like flying carpets from the game. Actually, are the things that attack, uh, which well, is kind of cool. cool. Yeah, and then the last character is Galahad, and he has his like arc gun, and he seems pretty straightforward. Uh, I always like this. I always like when they do this. Like when Mortal Kombat said they're gonna have uh, Kratos, and it's like, yeah, that's awesome. And people are like, wait a second, I don't know about the balancing of this character in the arcades. And it's, it's like, I don't care. I just want to play as God of War and fight Sub Zero, or Kratos and fight <laughs> Sub Zero. Like I don't care. Like. Is Yoshida? I don't know. Good thing this isn't like a tournament game. I don't think anybody's going to like care about the balance of y Yoshida's like tweet gun. Tweet power. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I like this stuff. I don't know. How do you feel about that stuff? Like when they release on a new platform, they have like exclusive characters because Shovel Knight's doing this. Shovel Knight's going to yeah. have Kratos on the PS4, and then it's going to have the Battle Toads on Xbox One. Xbox. Yeah. I don't know. I don't. I don't really care, honestly. Like <gasps> all the, because to me, it's something that's just. It's to get attention, and it's not going to really affect the gameplay, and it's not going to affect what I do. Like, the only one of these I can ever think of, and I know we even talked about it on here before, I think when we were talking about Mortal Kombat DLC, is the only one I ever liked was Link in, was Link in Soul Calibur 2. <laughs> That's the only one I can sit here and say, like, that one worked, I liked that one. That would make the least like, amount of sense. <laughs> and I'm not even, like, a huge Zelda person, but that one I liked. But, I don't know, for the most part, it's just like, eh, whatever, you just want attention for this, and there you go, you got it. I'm probably not going to bother getting excited about it or doing anything else oh yeah i mean it's a, it's pure marketing like that's all it is and that's all it is and that's and i realize that's what it is and it's just that's where i'm at with it is yay you put in the guy from journey in a different game make journey 2 <laughs> <laughs> they 
should never make Journey 2. Oh my god. They should never make Journey 2, but. (laughs) Journey 2, back to the desert. Bah! (laughs) (laughs) We just play the whole game backwards. (laughs) We talked about Devil May Cry last time. (laughs) 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 Uh, Moving on. Oh, that's fine. (laughs) Uh, So, this is basically in here, so I have an excuse to talk about Bloodborne. Bloodborne sold a million copies, and it beat Battle. Which is crazy. That is that is kind of crazy. It beat actually like, on PS4. It beat Hardline, uh, yeah. Battlefield Hardline, which is even crazier because that's the best-selling Hardline of all the systems. Is the PS4 version, and just what that game is like, just the marketing push. I mean, because it's that is not a game for everybody. Like, no, I've talked about my distaste of that game at this point, and I'm done with that game, and I'm over that game. Actually, we haven't talked about your distaste of that, but we'll talk about that another time. We didn't. No, let's not talk about that now because I, I want to talk about how good this game is. But continue. <laughs> All right, but yeah, but it's just it's 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 not the type of game where you think like, oh man, that game's gonna sell a million copies and be like the best selling game like for a month. It's like that game's gonna get released, some people are gonna play it, some people are gonna love it, and it's just gonna kind of be that thing that just kind of hangs in the background for a while. Yeah, it's, it's but super this game niche. Was cute. It's a niche product. Yeah, but yeah. All right, so you're gonna take like three minutes and just not shut up about Bloodborne. Yeah, no, of course, of course. This is Doug's Bloodborne update. I wish I had a YouTube right. video that had 200 something views, and I was talking about Bloodborne because <laughs> is that the one where you're just shitting on? <laughs> <laughs> I think that is. Yeah, the, our most viewed video is just me talking crap about Bloodborne. <laughs> so I'm not going to talk about crap about Bloodborne. I'm going to talk about how fucking amazing that game is, and nobody's going to listen. Hey, all right. So anyway, no, stop it, stop it. <laughs> you have three minutes. Go. Okay, I'm going to talk about something specific about Bloodborne. Bloodborne is surprising. Bloodborne is constantly surprising you, which is not something I expected for this game. I kind of figured that once you got the mechanics down, they were going to throw some new enemies at you, and that was about it. Um, But they don't just do that. They have, like, uh, one of my, I I guess this is not really a spoiler, uh, but you find a really inconsequential item in a very inconsequential area, and it's... That's the whole game. (laughs) And it says... (laughs) It has something to the tune of "Meet me in this place at at this at this place." So you go to that place, and suddenly, like a portal opens up, and now you're in a humongous abandoned castle. And it was just like, and this whole castle is like one of the most beautiful. Like if this was any other game, this would be the final boss castle. Um, but it's just a side area. Like I I looked, I looked at it, and it was just optional. It was, like, I've looked up, and apparently it's just an entirely optional area, and it's this gorgeous, beautifully made castle with this really cool sort of side story in it. Um, That's kind of cool. And then there's there's stuff where, like, you would, like, something has changed in an area you've been before, so you go back to the area, but then there's been, like, a massive chaotic attack on that area. So now, so all the enemies that were there before are now dead and replaced with the enemies that killed them. And then... Huh. Uh, and, like, characters that I, I... Well, you never really know if any of the NPCs you meet are good or bad. Um, but they'll have conflicts with each other, which I wasn't expecting. Sometimes they'll be your friend. Sometimes they won't be your friend. And you're not really sure. And even characters that you've sort of depended on throughout the game, like, turn out, like, well, maybe they weren't as good or maybe they were better than you thought they were. I This game this game has just completely enraptured my attention throughout the entire time. And just to wrap this up, because I know Brad's getting itchy... Uh, you have one minute left. All right. <laughs> I am timing this. You have one minute <laughs> to wrap this 50, 53 seconds. To all right, specific. all right. You'll be taking my time up. <laughs> to wrap this up, um, this game is the only game that's ever captured my attention the entire time I've played it by constantly throwing new things at me and new situations. I feel like uh, going back to God of War, like once you know how to beat that enemy, like, yeah, I, I got it. And you're going to find more of that enemy. It's going to be slightly up- upgraded with maybe a few different attacks. But this this game throws completely different enemies that have different, completely different status effects in completely new areas that have level design that is totally different than the area you've been before. Uh, yeah, this game is great. I'll probably have more updates in the future. I feel like I'm getting near the end. That might not be true, but I, I feel like I'm definitely itching that way. So, Brad, how much time do I have left? Probably zero. Uh, ten seconds. It's great. You should, everybody should play it. Not everybody should play it. This game is very niche, and only a few people should play it, and a lot of people are going to hate it. Not everybody should play this. I shouldn't play this. <laughs> okay, real quick. With a million copies sold, like, my first, my honestly, my first thought was not that's great. My first thought was, like, that's a lot of return copies to GameStop. <laughs> like, that's a lot of really angry people. I just got to imagine there's, like, oh, like, I feel like in about a few months from now, you're going to see a wall of, like, used Bloodborne's at GameStop. 
<laughs> just people so pissed that I <laughs> yeah. get this one. No, the, yeah. the game's not for everybody. No, no. Uh, another really quick announcement. There's a lot of just like small little announcements before I get to the final big one that I think everybody already knows about. Uh, Star Ocean 5 was announced, and neither of us played Star Ocean. Uh, and the only thing I really want to say about this is that I think after Square Enix kind of effed up one of their countdowns recently, which was they just had a big Z and it said PS4 and nobody knew it. And it's this stupid free to play Splunky game. Yep. Like Splunker. Not Splunky, it's Splunker. And uh, it looked terrible, and nobody cared. And every and that, that thing was up for like three days. Like everybody thought it was. Oh, it was big. Yeah, it was like all over everything. Like, what is this? What is this? What? Oh, I actually I actually stayed up to like two in the morning to see that reveal. I, Are you I kidding was me? So disappointed. <laughs> I didn't have. A, I was unemployed at that. Worst point. moment of your life. Anyway, uh, but Square's gotten much better with announcements. Uh, their last uh, countdown was for Dissidia, and then they had the Deus Ex reveal. I don't know. I think I, oh, and then now they have Star Ocean. So I think they realize that people are getting super pissed off if they have countdowns for shit that nobody cares about. Yeah. So I think, I think this is like one of the few companies like you can expect countdowns to be pretty cool. Uh, all right, last one. Everybody's been talking about this. And I'm just gonna let Brad go pretty much talk about all this. Uh, I'll start with new Battlefront was shown. Brad, go. <laughs> um, so I'm excited. Thanks, Brad. <laughs> no problem. All right, so anyway, a couple things. Uh, first of all, no space battles. That irritates me. <laughs> that is your first reaction <laughs> from all that wonderful news is no space battles. <laughs> okay, fine. We'll come back to that. <laughs> yeah. um, the game is crazy looking. Like None of that was necessarily in-game, but it was all in-engine. That game's not going to look that, that good. Up. That game is it's not, not going like to look that, that good. No way is that game going to look it's, that it's, good. It's... it's impossible for that game to look that good but oh my gosh does it look good it does look good um yeah and just i mean they showed off kind of the basic stuff i know they showed off um endor and hoth and you know all the kind of the typical you know big famous star wars scenes um that all look really good and i mean most of those are kind of classic levels from some of the from the older battlefront games but i don't know this game just looks great and uh yeah i mean split screen which to me, it seems crazy because I feel like no game has split screen anymore. Yeah, I thought that was I thought that was really cool. I I don't know. Did I haven't did you play the actually have you played the original Battlefronts? I've never played them. Are you serious? I, yeah, I never. Well, <sighs> I play a lot of multiplayer games. Like that game was just I'm that game was garbage you by yourself. That game was garbage too. by yourself. Well, yeah, I didn't play it by myself that much. Well, there you go. <laughs> yeah, I mean, if you had like Xbox and Xbox Live, like I'm sure that game was a blast. But I had PlayStation. Oh, I'm yeah. not gonna like hook up I my mean... dial up to the back of, to get my network thing. I don't know what the hell that thing. <laughs> Your network adapter. Yeah. I have one of those. Um, no, I mean, it, I actually I had fun playing this game together. And even split screen, like it worked, just because there's so many different options and everything. I just miss split screen to begin with. But no, I. The original Battlefronts came out at a time where if it said Star Wars, I was gonna buy it. Like, <laughs> you bought a lot of crappy I mean, shit then. <laughs> I bought every. I mean, I probably bought every Star Wars game. I mean, I, from during the PS2 era, I think I owned every the Star Wars console game games, not like the PC ones. Because I haven't heard you like gush about like Jedi Academy or Dark Forces or anything like that. Oh yeah, I had Jedi. Yep, I had. Yep, I had all of those. <laughs> oh, okay, all right. I know you're Dark Force. I know you're those. Dark are, those are those are legitimately like the only PC games I've ever played. Like all <laughs> <laughs> the Jedi Knight trilogy, Dark Forces, Dark Forces yeah. Two, Outcast and Academy. Yeah. And most of those, uh, the last couple actually got console releases. Uh, Outcast, I played on GameCube and Academy, I think. Yeah, I, I play, I played Kotor. I, I like Kotor a lot. That was fun. Kotor is also a good one. Kotor Two is actually might even be better. I don't know. They're close. Whoa, that's a but, con- that's actually a anyway. seriously controversial opinion that we can talk about later. <laughs> I, this is also going on, you know, ten years of not remembering <laughs> since playing it. But sure. anyway, um, but yeah, split screen. I mean, giant battles. I mean, it's by Dice, who you know are notoriously famous for just giant stuff and all the battlefield games really kind of setting up a lot of those big battle type things with their you know battlefield series so eight to 40 peoples in one just all kinds of cool stuff um how big were how big were the battles in battlefront like the original ones were they 40 players because i know i know battlefield is like 64 so this is like i want to say it was 16 oh okay all right oh shit seriously i think yeah it was i mean you gotta remember this was like mid-generation ps2 yeah, that's true and i don't think and they didn't i don't even remember if they got pc releases so i mean and the ps i mean xbox live and 
the early stages of PSN or whatever it was on PS2 that, I mean, couldn't handle that much. Yeah, they were not that's, yeah, that's the true. Greatest setups. I didn't think about that. So I'm pretty sure it was 16. Mm-hmm. The first one might have actually only been 8, but there was, like, NPCs or something. Yeah. Or bots or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, they, they kind of, like, filled the screen but... with, like, AI characters and stuff. Yeah. I know they did that a lot. Like, especially if you're doing two-player split screen, it was a lot of you, one other person, and then bots. Mm-hmm. But... I don't know. I'm excited for it. And then they announced, of course, the Force Awakens prequel DLC. Because I thought that was pretty cool. They're giving that away for free, which I thought was kind of nice. Thanks. I'm I'm excited about it because you get to because the whole thing is it's taking place on well the new trailer came out which I could talk about for like two hours. Not talking about that. Won't (laughs) (laughs) video game podcast. (laughs) But um, but it all takes place on that planet. I think it's Jakku. I don't know if I haven't actually heard anybody say it, but I think that's how you pronounce it. And so in the new trailer. And if you're like one of those people who's completely avoiding the trailer, stop listening for the next 10 seconds, 30 seconds. Nope, that has 88 um, million views in a day. Nobody is avoiding that trailer, I promise there are, you. There are lots of people who I know, who are like just like, who I've seen are like, nope, not watching it, not watching it, not watching it. I don't want to know Those anything. people are insane. I'm much... Continue. <laughs> yeah. But anyway, but the beginning of the trailer takes place on what everybody originally thought was Tatooine, and now it's not Tatooine anymore. But... Oh, it's not? Oh, I don't know. That's j- <laughs> okay, we're not going to get into episode 7 spoilers. <laughs> anyway, so they announced that the opening scene is not Tatooine, and all the scenes that you saw on from the first trailer are not Tatooine. That's actually Jakku, which is a new planet okay. that just happens to look like Tatooine. But anyway, <laughs> um, so in that you see a big down, like, super Star Destroyer like, buried into the ground. Yeah. You see a couple, I think there's an X-Wing, if I remember as the shot pans to the right, there's an X-Wing right before it. So you get to actually kind of live through, like, the battle that happened to set this planet up that you're going to see in episode seven, which I think is really cool. Cause it just kind of says, okay, you're a part now of the battle of the thing that led to this movie. So the way they're doing the DLC, I'm really actually excited about. Yeah. That's, I think that's, I think that's super neat. Uh, Oh, how do you feel about, I don't think I, I don't know if anybody should really care, but the game's not really going to have a single player. It's going to be sort of like the multiplayer maps that are going to have like sort of missions built into them, which to me, it sounds like a crappy single player. But I don't think anybody cares. I think because this is like a multiplayer only yeah. game. This is, I mean, it's like Unreal Tournament always had a single player and it did the same thing. Yeah, that's true. If you go back and look at those. And I think I think people, if you're buying this, you're not buying it to play single player. This is this is like my one exception to I don't like multiplayer games. I think. Yeah. Oh, well, yeah. It's, yeah, it's, I mean, Star Wars. So, of course, it's an exception to whatever rules you have. <laughs> 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 I'm sure your entire that moral code will break down if Star Wars is involved. <laughs> Oh, very much, yes. <laughs> uh, but yeah, but um, toggling between first and third person, which is something you could do in the old ones, which always kind of gave it a very different feel. Cause there's not very many games where you can do that, and it actually works well, and it worked well, at least in the old ones. So. Yeah, I'm actually curious if this is going to be a new... I don't know, it doesn't seem anything like uh, Battlefield, which I think is kind of cool. Like It definitely feels like something different than Battlefield. Because I think a lot of people were like, up, oh, it's going to be Battlefield 5. Yeah, it's just going to be a Battlefield mod. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, kind of like, not like Hardline was. I'm sure people spent a lot of time on Hardline, so I'm not going to knock that game too much because I actually played it. Um, but yeah, I mean, it looks it looks different to me. Like, my first thought when I was like looking at this trailer was like, this is I wasn't thinking Battlefield. I was like, oh, wow, this looks, wow, this, this is Star Wars. Like, this yeah. is one of those games that, like, when I was watching this trailer, I was like, look how far games have come. Like, this looks like the movie. That's Oh, yeah, easily. It, it looks better than the Great. CG in, like, Episode 1 and 2. At this, at well, this moment, whether or not it, we pretend those don't exist, <laughs> so that's okay. Oh yeah, there, oh yeah. Speaking of it, that's actually kind of important. There's no prequel stuff at all. It's all yep. Um, original trilogy, trilogy, and then the DLC for Episode Seven. Uh, yeah. What's your opinion on that? Do you feel like that's good, bad, nothing? I feel like that's fantastic. <laughs> I kind of want, I kind of want to play that Gungan battle. I think that'd be kind of cool to play. Not that I like Jar Jar Binks or anything, but I thought that Gungan battle was pretty neat. Okay, maybe not. Yeah. With the shields and the I, the things that walk, and they, I don't, I don't know. That was like the good part of episode one. That's like the only part I remember from episode one. <laughs> <laughs> lots of lots of whining. Um, no, I, I, I wouldn't have been upset if it wasn't included. I just think, I don't know. I don't really necessarily have an opinion on it. I don't feel like it's lacking because it's not there. I don't feel like it would have been enhanced if it was. I mean, nobody. The things they showed off were Endor and Hoth. Those were the two big ones, and that's what people yeah. want. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, that's true. Nobody's going to be going, oh, the Battle of Geonosis isn't in there? <laughs> but how? But the scene where Count Dooku does something, like, nobody's saying they're missing yeah, that. Yeah. 
Well, maybe if you are, my apologies, now, but you're doing it wrong. Yeah, now that I think about it, it's actually super weird they don't have like space battles because they they that's gotta be that's gonna be something down the line they're gonna be adding. Like there's gotta be a DLC for that. Oh yeah. Because I I mean like when I'm thinking of like big Star Wars battle, they're all in space. Um Yeah, you think battle. If you have any think the second Death Star yeah. and I mean even the second Death Star, like yeah, you had stuff on Endor, but a huge part of that was Lando leading the rest of the Rebel fleet against the Death Star. So yeah. even that, you're missing half the battle there. That's, uh, yeah, that's weird. But the, the, and when Battlefront did space battles, did they have, like, on-foot stuff? Because I think it'd be better if they just did space battles, end of story. If I remember, okay, and this might be, I might be mis- confusing my Star Wars games. I believe you could land in the hangar and run to a ship and jump in a ship, and that was it. Uh, I, I think it'd just be cool if, if they just had, like, straight space, like, just did Rogue Squadron, basically. I mean, that's pre- that's really pretty much what it was. I mean, if the space battle lasted 10 minutes, you were probably out of a spaceship for, like, 20 seconds. It was more of a, oh, okay. oh crap, my X-Wing is shot to crap. I'm going to go park it in this, pick up a Y-Wing, and go out. Oh, gotcha. gotcha. So it was more of, like, a more of like a hub than necessarily, like, a on-foot section. If I remember correctly, I think you might have been able to, like, if you were, like, land an enemy fighter in there, and then you could run around and shoot people if you wanted to, but... yeah. It's been a while, so I don't that really is, That is weird that they're missing that, then, because that does seem like a huge aspect. Yeah, of... and see, and that's why I try to start with it, because that's a big deal. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, I know, we don't, well, we don't always start with the negative. I feel like everybody's going to start with the negative. With that, that. Granted, although, I'm assuming that with what we've seen from Episode 7, you might actually be able to play like, some of those ships anyway, because if you look at the Episode 7 trailer, they're actually like in atmosphere with the X-Wings and stuff. Yeah, I, I did. Really I did, see yeah. a whole lot in the original trilogy, so I mean, I could see them putting a lot more of that Okay, it's not a space battle, but there's twelve X wings and ten Tie fighters flying above your head. Yeah, I, yeah, because I, you're right. Episode seven doesn't seem to have actually haven't really shown a lot of space in episode seven. So if they're trying to focus on that, you know, just with like marketing and stuff like that, it's like, oh well, this is the first time you're gonna play with an X wing when it's in like you know uh, atmosphere or whatever. So I think that's kind of cool. What's with this Xbox One first stuff? You didn't hear I, about that? No, because I'm I'm so confused because it's like very clear that like PlayStation spent a gagillion amount of dollars to get PlayStation Four all over this thing. I don't remember if it was the demo or a beta or what, but um, they have EA Access. That oh, is that pro- that is what it is? Okay, that's yeah, what it it's is. going up. It's going up through EA Access, which P- PlayStation uh. doesn't have. So it's not necessarily that it's exclusive to Xbox One. It's just that. Oh, it's going to be here first because it's going to be an EA Access. So I don't remember how exactly EA Access works because it seemed like kind of a nonsense idea. But No, I mean, it made sense. Actually, it makes more sense for you because you buy Maddens all the time. But you like buying Maddens. But the thing is, like, it was like basically you could play the yearly sports games without having to buy the yearly sports games. Essentially, yeah. But um, that's what it's going up on first. So because it's going to be on there, it changes, uh, you know, the access to it on PlayStation. Yeah, that sounds that sounds like a tit for tat. Then, like, okay, we get exclusive marketing. We can put PlayStation Four all of this thing, and then you guys can say, "Oh, it's coming on Xbox One first. Yeah, so everybody's happy. Yeah, well, kind of. Yeah. Do uh, you have any closing thoughts on Battlefront? I'm excited, and I want to play it now. Oh, are you gonna pre? Are you? Is this gonna be a day one game for you? Heck yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is. <laughs> And this is what really I actually bought. I don't tell you this. I actually bought Rogue Squadron two the other day for GameCube. Wait for Game? How much that cost you? Uh, it was like six bucks somewhere. I found it online for like six bucks, and I was like, oh yeah, I should totally buy that. Are you serious? That game's actually. Or no, you know what? It might have been Rogue. I think it was Rogue Squadron three. Oh, that makes more sense. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it was Rogue Squadron three. But anyway, okay. yeah, no, this is like the first like proper Star Wars game in a long time. Like I'm trying to think. I think the last one was Force Unleashed two. Two, yeah, that's that's the that game I immediately went to. Yeah, they've been. Co- and well, I mean, that's yeah. that's three or four years old at this point. So there's been a distinct lack of Star Wars games, and I missed the I missed the like two you know two Star Wars games a year stuff back in oh, the PS2. Oh, don't worry. Era. There's going to be a billion Star Wars games. Like the and one I will be buying all of them. Yeah, <laughs> like the one woman who like we talked about last time, like or one of our fewer when we were talking about Uncharted four. The woman who like heads the Uncharted series is now heading the Star Wars EA, one of the Star Wars EA games. Yep. So yeah, there's gonna be. Don't worry if you miss Star Wars game. There's gonna be a bazillion Star Wars games in the future. I'm so excited! I'm and so Brad excited. is super excited. I, I th- I'm like okay. I like Star. I like Star Wars. I don't. I don't have quite the fervor for it as. as I mean, we need to follow up to Republic Commando. And... <laughs> that was oh, one of the few that would be cool. Like the that was that was like the M rated like SWAT game where you're it, it was it was basically Tom Clancy's Star Wars. <laughs> oh man, yeah. 
this would be really I really hope that because like we're gonna do we're gonna experiment the Star Wars universe that we're gonna see smaller games like that like that would be great like a that was really a small game but it was just like a I don't know that was really a well made game too but I mean like that like you had Bounty Hunter where you got to run around as Jango Fett this was of course during the prequel trilogies like <laughs> to push yeah. this as hard as possible I mean like that was a great game that well well it probably wasn't a great game but that was a game I played through three or four times like, <laughs> you had one yeah. where you were playing as Obi-Wan which had weird lightsaber I, I could go on about Star Wars games forever but you had like so many just like weird things with Star Wars games that yeah. you don't have anymore I think, I think we're going to see a Star Wars game renaissance coming up Probably a lot of crappy like iOS Star Wars, Star Wars games as well. That's uh, where it'll start. <laughs> All right, uh, so I guess that actually concludes episode nine. That was a lot of that was a fun episode. I like we had talked about a lot of stuff. I like that episode. Uh, <laughs> not that I don't like the other episodes. <laughs> Just a little self congratulations. Yeah, no, before I we go was, here. Uh, we're yeah. great. You guys. We're great. Great job, guys. <laughs> I don't know. Sometimes, sometimes there's topics I like to talk about. Sometimes there's topics I don't really care about. But these are the fun. Uh, so, as always, we if you're listening to us, you probably know what you can already listen to us on. We're on YouTube. Uh, oh, speaking of which, YouTube stuff. Uh, <laughs> you were just all over the place here. Anyway. Yeah, there's a lot of stuff going on today. Um, well, because we have really long podcasts, and, I, and we understand that some people just, like, don't have an hour to kill to listen to us, like, just talk about shit. Uh, we decided that we're going to start something. We haven't really come up with a name with it yet, uh, but we're going to cut out, like, the 10 – because we have our, our – our podcast broken down by like little 10 minute segments or 20 minutes or whatever we talk about games. So we're going to like kind of cut those out and then put those on YouTube separately. Um, so they're basically like little dark slider shorts. So if you don't want to listen to us, like talk for an hour, you just want to hear us talk about a specific game. Well, it'll basically just have dark slider shorts and then whatever game we're talking about or whatever news we're talking about. Yep. Um, so hopefully we'll have, well, our first one will be about Mortal Kombat 10, which will, which will just basically be the beginning of this episode cut down for people. Um, so as always, thanks for listening. Uh, you can follow us on YouTube or iTunes and pretty much anything that takes podcasts. We're, uh, Brad, what, what else are we on with podcasts? I don't remember. If I ever see a podcast thing, I just upload it. So, <laughs> <laughs> so just like we're on Stitcher. I no, know that I'm, one. Stitcher, Last FM. There was something FM. I don't think it was Last FM. That's a music thing. It was something else. Player yeah. FM. And if you search. That's <laughs> Okay. If you, ser- and if you search us on Google. It does still say, did you mean Darksiders? But we do come up as, like, number three. Woo. So we're getting up there. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, that's that's the episode. Uh, thank you all for listening. Follow us on YouTube or iTunes. And our Twitter is Darkslider, at Darksliders underscore P-O-D. Thanks for following us and, and li- listening to us. Bye. Bye. <laughs>